sea devils of the SS features none of the mean spirited nastiness and degradation that is generally associated with the Nazi ploitation genre. Instead, it uses its German wartime setting as an excuse to get its more than willing prowling out of their uniform and onto their back as often as possible. The lovely lady is doing whatever is necessary to assist with the Nazi war effort. Boasting a very attractive female cast, most of whom get buck naked plus better than average production values. This had the potential to be a fun slice of sleazy trash. But with flat direction from Owen Dietrich and nary a plot to tie the unimaginative soft core and fighting together, the whole story of fair proves tedious in the extreme. With Adolf Hitler's Wehrmacht facing imminent defeat, the so-called Lightning Girls, Nurses, Secretaries, Housewives and ordinary women from all over Germany rushed to answer the nation's call to arms. Now against the unstoppable Red Army, the loyal female disciples of the swastika must do everything in their power to boost the morale of the German frontline officers, including offering the young bodies to the battle-scared soldiers. But what happened if the secret army of pleaser is inclined to have too much fun? Although this film is included in the genre of Nazi exploitation, there is very little, if anything at all, that could be described as exploitative unless you include a dozen or so beautiful young women taking their cloth off at various points during the film. There is not much of a story as it concerns a family who have displeased the Nazi regime and the two sisters who are drafted into the women's army to serve and service. The brave German soldiers on the Eastern Front. For a film of a dubious merit, the production values are good, with genuine and replica German military vehicle and uniform. Russian tanks and the use of a steam locomotive with carriages. For a director who made his name with Sopko films, the love scenes here are laughable to say the least, as are some of the military action scenes. In one scene, a couple leave their radio listening post to have love, the girl being totally naked while the male remains fully clothed. In a scene where the train is strapped by an aeroplane, all the occupants abandon the train by jumping off from one side only, presumably because that was the side the camera was on. What interested me were the production and filming location, but there are few clues in the film. Three of the credited crew 
have connection with the former Yugoslavia, principally Serbia. The locomotive carries a serial number and is of a type used by the old Yugoslav railways and the aeroplane seem to carry the insignia of the old Yugoslav Air Force. Now largely demolished Chaseno Film Studio near Belakrav has hearts similar to those seen in the film. So my guess is, is that this was the site of the army barrack. The railway station is more problematic. There are few clues in the film but the two best candidates that I can come up with are Anzanin and Covin. But this come with reservation so unless something else comes up that's it. With World War II rapidly coming to an end, several young women volunteer to join the German army to show their support for their beloved Huha. However, one of the doctors charged with helping them enlist comes into conflict with a Stapo and as a result he and his two daughters are subsequently drafted and sent to the Russian front. That said, this film essentially tells the story of the ordeals that these three people encounter as the Russian army begin to close in from the east. What it did have, however, were a lot of naked women and scenes of simulated love which not only lack both passion and eroticism but also lack any tangible story to make any of this scene interesting or worthwhile. Additionally, the characters lack depth and the acting was quite second-rate as well. This film, another of those delicate and Tasteful films that fell under the Nazi ploitation subgenre. This film still causes a shudder in many, even 40 years after they were released. The mixing of the Holocaust with sadistic horror and salacious exploitation being a combination that continue to trouble today. If nothing else, the Naziploitation subgenre is one of the few types of genre cinema that remains shocking decade after its heyday. But I disagree, this one shocked me. And the reason wasn't the usual one when it comes to this kind of thing, in that it wasn't the salacious content that struck me. It was the fact that when watching it, I thought to myself, could this possibly be an actual German movie? It seemed incredible that the German nation, so directly associated with the evils of Nazism, would ever have the brass snake to produce a film remotely in the ballpark of Naziploitation. This movie had been produced by none other than Germany's neutral neighbors, the charming Swiss. But given the sad language, this is the Nazi ploitation film that feels most German, which certainly gives it a whole new aspect of wrong-headedness. During the last days of World War II, a battalion of female Nazis are sent to the Eastern Front to service battle weary soldiers fighting the relentless Soviet advance. There is really not very much more plot to it than that and what there is really so as 
no more than a framework for a succession of softcore love scenes. This one came out very early in this cycle of films and in fact was a year ahead of the movie that is often considered to be the template in this genre. Elsa, Seawolf of the SS, so it's perhaps unsurprising that it seems a bit different. Unlike that film or all of the subsequent outrageous offering from the Italians, this one focuses on Nazi women as opposed to female victim of the Nazis. There is no death camp setting nor is there any real violence to speak of. Somewhat unusually, the Nazis are presented as essentially sympathetic and not really the baddies we are used to them being. Which is unsurprisingly not something you see very often. It also seems to possess higher production values than these types of movies normally have. With more sets and some battle scenes too. It lacks the sea access that the later nastier films still radiate. It's really a Sopko film with Nazi iconography which makes it very odd that much I will admit.